this is uh, more of a user's view of home automation. Um, so while I have been working and dealing with the open source community for a very long time, since last century in fact, so uh, I always enjoy being able to say that. Um, this particular thing is uh, just a little, th there was an issue that we had at home and uh, this is something that I, I went through to just try and resolve that, which I thought you might find interesting. He said looking for the mouse. Yep. Does that work? Oh, there we go, look at that. Right, so uh, because we don't actually have any problems anymore in society, there's only opportunities. Um, so the opportunity here is to improve the domestic environment, which includes the spousal approval factor, which I'm sure you all know about, and you need to get that fairly high. We have a fairly large open plan living space in our house. Uh, it goes across the center of the, of the building. Uh, so at one end we have the parents' TV, and at the other end we have the children's TV. Uh, and the challenge I've got is that I have a very vocal child. Um, he's um, autistic, uh, doesn't talk, we use a lot of sign language, um, but that does not mean he is quiet. He's very noisy indeed, so there's a, a slight problem there. Um, some of the desired outcomes we were looking for, valid learning experience, aren't we all looking for that? Now that's not necessarily just for him, it's for me as well, because I like learning, so uh, learning experience. And there's some uh, societal benefits as well, which uh, include not having the neighbours ring the police thinking that we're murdering the, uh, the young lad. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> now, why does he get excited? Well, there's a lot to get excited about on TV. I mean, we've got cartoons and other slapstick, you know, Gravity Falls, Adventure Time. You, you all know these things? You all must be part of popular culture? Yeah, got them all? Um, Action-packed movies, the Guardian Star Wars of the Galaxy. I mean, there's a whole raft of stuff in there. Uh, and sundry YouTube mayhem, and as I say, trains mainly. Fast cars, aeroplanes, you know, anything you like. It's just uh, just one of those things. So, uh, what I was really after was, if there was a bit of noise, then something happened. So, if this, then that. We've all got that? It's even a website, isn't it? Anyone used it? It's fantastic. Yes? No? Use it again, recommend it to your friends? <laughs> something like that. Um, from an architectural speaking, what we're actually talking about is a target environment model. This is what we want to have happen. Uh, and like anything else in life, why use something that already exists when I can do it myself for twice the price uh, and potentially keep all of the data in-house rather than out in the cloud? Not that I'm paranoid or anything. So, <coughs> what I really want is when the volume goes above a certain level, some magic stuff happens and the TV gets turned off. Right, with me so far? Nice and simple? How do we translate that into the real world? So, what I've currently got, the current environment model from an architectural perspective, we have Wemos. Everyone know and love, love those? Fantastic piece of kit. We have powered HDMI switches, so we've got a little media server there on his TV and it has a whole raft of other bits and pieces. You know, there's a PlayStation, there's a, there's a this, there's a that, there's all sorts of things. Uh, so, if currently, and I'm the magic bit at the moment, currently, if he gets too noisy, then we push a button, get sent through to the Wemo, turns the HDMI switch off, TV goes off for a certain period of time. We have a little bit of a discussion about his noise levels, etc., etc., etc. He completely ignores me, uh, and then I turn the TVs back on. So, we've got the basis of something going here, right? Sound like a plan? What else do we need in order to build this environment? So we've got our little uh, media server there, a nice little Raspberry Pi. So we might need something for some input, something to detect the sound. So I happen to have lying around an Ollie Android tablet, the world famous Ollie brand, $70 at the warehouse stationery. Sound like a bargain? Absolutely. So we've got a microphone and we have an operating system. We now need to run something on it. So we're looking at processing the sound. Uh, one of the applications that I found out there is a thing called noise meter. And what it does is it has a little uh, flag in it. So you can actually, um, it'll sit there, it'll run, reference the uh, outside uh, acoustic environment. You can set a trigger. Once it goes above a certain level, it will write to a file. 
So we've got something here called noise meter. I can set a trigger on it and I can set an output file. So it will write to a file. Fantastic. What do I do now? There's a thing called Tasker, which is very popular in the Android environment. Uh, and what it can do is it can track things, including when something gets written to a file. It has a little MQTT plugin. So what I can now do is when the log file gets written, Tasker will read the file, it will uh, publish a message to the MQTT broker that I've got sitting on my little uh, open HAMP server there. Something to act on the, re on the request. We've got open hab. It picks up the request from uh, Mosquito, triggers a rule, uh, and then uses its little Wemo binding to turn the TVs off or turn the uh, HDMIs off for 10 seconds and then turn them back on. Absolutely sight unseen, no touch. Absolutely fantastic. So I have plausible deniability. <laughs> All right. Basically, he can shout as much as he likes. The TV gets turned off. We just say, you're just being too noisy. Ten seconds later, the TV turns on again. Absolutely fantastic. And it worked. Does it work? Yes. Mostly. All right? I said it was a double room, right? So we have the children's TV and the parents' TV. What he worked out very early on in the piece was that if he came into the parents' area and shouted... <laughs> His TV would stay on. <laughs> so get a second, uh, get a, got a second tablet, put it close to the, to the parents' TV, put task on it, all those sorts of things. So that was quite good. Uh, need to detect the physical movement of the TV as well. So he's in his room. He's worked out that shouting means the TV goes off, but he can still hit it. So he can bash the TV. Now, this is a little um, LED TV. They don't really take kindly to bashing. I've actually put a big piece of glass in front of it, but he's still whacking it. I want to put a cage up around it. My wife says, no, that doesn't fit in with the house. So, uh, you know, we've still got to, uh, you know, deal with the TV. Last one there. <laughs> the world-famous Ollie brand is a little bit flaky. Who would have thought? <laughs> the pro... The primary issue with it is a spontaneous reboot after some indeterminate period of time. I have no idea what the sequence is, but basically at some point, uh, day maybe two, maybe five, the uh, tablets will reboot. Uh, and when they reboot, it forces a restart of noise meter, which starts a new log file by default. You can't tell noise meter what log file name it has to use, so you've actually got to go in afterwards and reset it. And you can't use wildcard file names in Tasker. <laughs> so you can't even specify a general list of names. To, so these are a couple of things that I'd like to have fixed. Um, but the whole point, uh, it was absolutely fantastic, and I really enjoyed myself. However, um, uh, this kind of is leading into you know, a longer case, but there's a lot of issues that we have with just how usability works. Like the amount of time that it took me to get this to this point, uh, and then recently I decided, okay, I'm going to upgrade. I'll upgrade from OpenHab to OpenHab 2, which of course means all the bindings have changed and everything's changed. They've still got the OpenHab web, 1 website, which has half the information. The OpenHab 2 website has the other half of the information. Um, and I thought, OK, well, I've been through all this. I've really enjoyed myself. I've worked out how to do all this. Uh, I'll contribute back to the community. So I thought, OK, I'll, uh, I'll tell the OpenHab people that there's a couple of things that they might want to change on their website so that we can actually get some documentation changed. Little thing down the bottom says, if you want to update this, um, you know, just click here and, and do this. Here's the, here's the instructions, which basically involved me setting up a virtual machine on my uh, home system to run a thing called Vantage, which ran something else, which formatted the files, which then sent them through to GitLab. And I'm sort of sitting there going, actually, I just want to comment. So there's some interesting stories in behind there. But uh, as a general end user, uh, I've had a huge amount of fun. Um, and it's, you know, as I say, it's been, a, it's been a fantastic learning curve for me. So, any questions? No? <laughs> I will. Ooh. Um, 
this is one of the things that was you know, going through it. And not all of that stuff is open source, as you probably surmised. Um, in fact, the one thing that, like Tasker is the classic one. I actually did, um, I spent this, the princely sum of $2.50, I think, to get the ability to uh, write or to detect a, a written file. Uh, but other than that, it's, it's pretty much open. But um, you know, the, again, the question is if there's something else out there that can do this stuff. So you know, I'm just, I mean, this is how people develop things in the, in the real world. Uh, you know, it's kind of like, what have they got? What can they reuse? What can they blah? So you end up not necessarily with the best solution, but just something that works, which is essentially where I am. <laughs> Simple, what, replacements of? Yeah, yeah. No, see, I haven't. So there you go. A starter for 10. No, actually, I'm enjoying myself. I mean, you know, I've been, uh, one of the things the world famous Ollie brand tablet, I've been sitting there trying to get it to um, be a little bit more stable. Uh, so currently, I have one tablet that works and one that I managed to brick. Uh, <laughs> So if anyone can tell me what the zip format of the sideload file is so that I can get the system partition back, I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you very much.